So Weijia joins me now from the White House to talk a little bit more about these negotiations. Um, Weijia, as you reported, it looks like the president's initial infrastructure proposal would likely be split into two bills、uh, to still get everything that he wants. But that means he's got two bills that he's going to have to get across the finish line. So this one bill dealing with more traditional forms of infrastructure seems to be moving along now. But what about this other bill? How? What's the strategy that the White House has to get both of them across the finish line? Well, you just heard from two、um, Democratic lawmakers who are very far apart when it comes to both the price of the bill and what should be in it. And as you heard Senator Joe Manchin mention,、um, he's not going to support something that balloons to five or six trillion dollars, which is what、uh, progressives would like to see to include more、uh, with regard to spending on green energy, new jobs there, and more、um, for things like universal pre-K and other things that they want to put. In the American Families Plan, so they're going to have to work out how much money they're willing to spend on that package. Because in order to pass that piece, which is the American Families Plan, every single Democrat has to be on board because they're going to use that process that we've seen before called reconciliation, which means they can go at it alone without a single Republican, but they can't afford to lose any one from their own party. So they're working on that and、um, trying to figure out. A compromise there, but you're right. As for the、um, other one with Republicans, now that the president has clarified that he doesn't need both of those bills at the same time to sign, it looks like the negotiators will move forward, and they believe they have enough votes from the GOP for that more traditional bill. So、um, that one seems like it is closer, and what will most likely happen is that will、uh, be signed into law first, and then the Families Plan,、um, which the president will. Continue to sell to the American people. In fact, he's heading to Wisconsin tomorrow with the Secretary of Agriculture to make his case for both measures. So we know that one of the sticking points when it came to the infrastructure bill was how it was going to be paid for. Republicans did not want to see any taxes raised, and it seems like they achieved that. It's going to be paid for with unused COVID relief money and、uh, stepping up IRS enforcement.、So、people who haven't been paid their taxes are going to be sweating a little.、Um, but what about this other plan, right? This human infrastructure plan. In order to use reconciliation, it has to be kind of a budgetary legislation. But what's the? How are they going to pay for it? Well, that's exactly why the initial bill had to be split up because Republicans and the White House and Democrats could not agree on how to pay for it because the president has made clear that he wants to change corporate tax rates and he wants to raise them,、um, which would mean repealing the cuts that we saw under the Trump administration. And moderates like Joe Manchin, who we just heard from, were really opposed to the 28 percent figure that the White House had been proposing, but he was open to. Raising it、um, at least some, and so it looks like that will be、um, the main way that they will、uh, garner funds for this. Because again, they can do it alone without Republicans having to sign off on a corporate tax hike. So, other than that,、um, you know, we do have to look closer at the president's budget and and see where they will move money around. But again, right now, the priority is is just deciding the items that will be in it and how much that. Big bottom line will be.、Um, president Biden is scheduled today, switching things up a little bit, to meet with、um, the president of Israel, the outgoing president of Israel.、Uh, what's on the agenda? What will they be talking about? So we expect the top of the agenda to be the Iran nuclear deal, which, of course, under the former administration, the former President Trump pulled out of,、um, which was a signature. Uh, achievement of the Obama administration, including、um, Vice President Biden's efforts to have the U.S. enter the agreement, and so far it's been rocky. The negotiations with Iran to try to get、um, everybody back to the table and into a new agreement, in part because Israel has been so staunchly against it. But you have new leadership now, and the president is expected to make the case that look, they want the same thing, which is. For Iran to curb its nuclear ambitions and efforts, so that will be、um, a main discussion. Another one will be、uh, this recent war between Israel.
Israel and Hamas over Gaza. Of course, that lasted for about 11 days, and President Biden ultimately um, called for a ceasefire, but that took some prodding from members of his own party. So that's expected to come up because he did say he was going to help uh, Israel refurbish its defense system. Um, and that has sparked some controversy as well within his own party because, again, lots of Palestinian lives were killed, uh, were taken in that conflict. And so um, those two things will likely top uh, their, their meeting today. Mm -hmm. uh, one more topic for you. Last night, the U.S. carried out airstrikes on the Iraq-Syria border. What more are we learning about this? What prompted those airstrikes? What are you hearing? Well, the Pentagon is describing those airstrikes as defensive, and we know that President Biden directed them um, against facilities that are uh, used by Iran-backed militia groups that we know have engaged in at least five or six attacks on U.S. personnel and facilities in Iraq and Syria. And so they are saying this was simply in response uh, to something before. Now, these are images of the latest airstrike. The last one took place in March in retaliation for a strike which killed an American contractor. In a statement last night, the Department of Defense wrote, the United States took necessary and deliberate action designed to limit the risk of escalation. And so far, we know that defense sources tell CBS News that there's no indication of any civilian casualties. Anne-Marie. All right, Ouija, thank you so much.